separately. But Merlini, how are you feeling about this this game number two? We're seeing that there's a Puck ban and a Sand King ban. Uh, it felt like Bulbo was a pretty big difference maker in that last one. Definitely so. I want to see them give a better hero for uh, Kaiser. I think he didn't play particularly well in the Ember Spirit. It was, it was a first phase Ember. So that, I think, had a lot to do with it. But I want to see if DC pick Co-op now or if Hellraisers are immediately going to take Co-op. I, mean, I think that, that would actually changes the game a lot. I mean, didn't they first phase the Co-op last time on DC? But I think they had second pick, so it came after the clockwork. Nope. Yep. I think Co-op's higher priority here. Hellraisers turn DC, they decide to run back the silencer again, and the interesting thing about this was that Batrider was not banned this time around, so Hellraisers have the opportunity to take both Quop and Bat. If you do that, are you maybe exposing a little bit too much? If there were Nick still in the pool, then yeah, but I think you can do it. They do like the Quop. Are they not going to go for the Quop? Okay, I, was, I, I would have been really surprised if they didn't go for the Quop there. This does leave open the Batrider again for Digital Chaos if they want to run that. Uh, it's interesting how, like, in the this group stage format, there sure is, like, you know, a, a sort of more global meta, but there's also just this relationship that exists between the two teams, which isn't something that I feel like we always end up seeing. That means it's a well-balanced patch, I would say. Yeah. If teams can have their own particular play styles and not have to really cater to what everyone else does, and you can do your own thing and still win. Well, not that these two teams are winning that much, yeah. but they think it's going to win, which is maybe even more important. Whoa. Mm, that's a rough opener. At least Clock can hook shot to stop it, but that is super unreliable. Yeah. Well, there are other heroes that you can still take for Hellraisers going forward. I would imagine Rubik is going to be a ban. Um, what else really hurts Enigma a lot? Is there something Silencer's like by far the best. Okay. Because you can do it even though he has BKB and Lincolns. I think like BKB, Lincolns, Black Hole with Global Silence is very hard to stop. And Silencer, if he gets BKB and Lincolns, it doesn't matter. I think any other hero, you have to like bash him or do something like ridiculous to be able to stop it. Um, one counter that always does exist is Helmo dominating a troll and then netting him. So I think that's that hasn't really been looked into enough because of uh, the amount of times that Helmo Dominator has been picked up, which is near zero, right? If not zero, I think I've seen it in like No Tail like once in the past month. I think we saw it in a, a game that it might have actually been DC that played it. Uh, where I think, or no, it was Execration and DJ was playing Chen. Um, but yeah, it's it's super duper rare. Uh, other heroes, Lich as an answer, um, is kind of decent. You mentioned Fenge, yeah. trying to help out their, their lanes a little bit, maybe. Yep. They could also go for like a Mag Troll sort of team fight lineup, too. I could definitely see that being an option for them. But Mag plus Quap, not the best combo, but still something to consider. I would really like to see Earthshaker for them. I th really think that 3-3 needs a team fighter. Like he, I think so much that the team fight in the mid game revolves around him. And if he's unable to make rotations, nothing just happens for the team. I, I like I think that Milan does a decent job of running around the early game, but the mid game just completely falls flat. Uh, I, I think their other two cores just need a lot of farm. And if they have three cores farming, it's a recipe for losing. I mean, you talked about it a lot the, uh, in the earlier series that we had cast, the fact that now neutral lane, particularly in the jungle, is so much less valuable than it was before. And, you know, if you're out in the lanes... That's Unless it's fine. Ancients. That's why Magnus is good. Okay. Ancient stacks in particular. A recipe for losing. <laughs> Sounds like <laughs> a disgusting recipe for, like, a chocolate chip cookie, if you were trying to relate that to... to Oh no, not Legion again. So this is like the salt instead of sugar in the in the cookie recipe? Oh, yeah. Okay. I totally did that once. For some reason, my mom back at home has salt and sugar in unlabeled containers <laughs> right next to each other. And I was a little kid. Like they, I think they look different if you look at the crystals. Yeah. But I was a little kid, so I didn't. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, yeah, left is sugar, right is salt. It's like, yeah, okay, I was supposed to know that. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. The uh, In college, did you ever have those, like, recipes that are things you can just make in a microwave? Yeah, sure. All right, so one of them is brownies, right? Okay. But we didn't have flour. 
so I just like substituted more sugar and it turned into this like gelatinous mess of like oh. chocolatey awfulness um, did it taste good? yeah it tasted really good I ate all of it <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's a recipe for disaster in the weight department I suppose yeah that's true but it was delicious it was you know you gotta sometimes take a t t bite the bullet Wow, in DC now, you, you look at this, the Earth Spirit picked up as well. This guy, paired together with everything else, they've got silences, they've got stuns, they've got disabled damage, everything in the kitchen seat sank. The only thing that they need now is like some tower hitters, potentially. Are you worried for Hellraiser? Not Rizzers? really. You actually don't really need tower hitters too much with Enigma, because the thing about Enigma is you generally always have better late game. Okay. So, like, the longer the game goes on, the worse it is for the other team. Like, normally the pressure... Unless you have like a very solid anti black hole, uh, anti anti black hole mechanic, then you're very comfortable taking it late and just always sitting on your side of the map and always defending towers casually. I would say just wait for the BKB Octarine, Lincoln's uh, BKB Blink, Lincoln's Octarine Refresher, and then the talent too. And then the talent too. Yeah, and then you're just unstoppable. You just like win every team fight, especially with heroes like these that just die in a in a midnight post black hole. We did see what Alchemist was, I believe, was uh, picked by LGD. Newbie took one that they random. Yep. But we saw LGD just take one. Okay. And it was versus the mass team fight too. So we, we talked about the Lich. It does help their team fight? You mentioned that it helps break by Cole. So um, I think much needed, I would say, especially from last game. But their team fight is still pretty terrible. How, th there's not that many spells that just like overwhelmingly win a team fight. Nothing like Black Hole. I think even Global Silence is really, really good. Timber Solve versus two strength heroes. He's also a core that does not give any hoots about Frost Armor. Yeah. And I, I, I'm assuming this might be a safe lane Timber as well to deal with the like Legion. You could just like 1v1 and even think about aggroing, maybe, if you want. Or, I don't know. Maybe it's, it's something else. It's mid. Okay. What do you like about it in the mid roll? Well, I, I bet plays it and Mason doesn't. Okay. So that's <laughs> simple. <laughs> Sounds good. They ban out the TA, so I, I don't know. I guess that maybe they're not uh, as, as well versed with the heroes or possibly um, just more worried about that as a potential hero against them. No, I'd be way more scared of Mason hero. Yeah. Like, what could he play here? What does Mason like to play? Sven is still in the pool. Yeah, I don't think they... Yeah, Sven plus I think was pretty nasty. He's just a little bit tougher as clock, I would say. And problematic versus Frost Armor. Luna? I always like Luna a little bit. Weaver is another specialty, but... Yeah, I think Weaver gets controlled out by Clock and Legion, but it is one of Mason's most popular heroes. He does play Lone Druid, too. I actually wouldn't mind Lone Druid so much. Lone Druid's pretty good. Okay. Oh, okay, Lone Druid. Well, right. clearly on their mind, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's something that maybe could have been that, like, defining factor to help that heavy push, but... Even Marana, I think, would be... We've been seeing a lot more Marana cores. So, you mentioned a Sven. Yeah, it works well with Enigma. Very good versus LC. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, too, like, last game they ran a clockwork and wasn't able to stop Mason yeah. from farming anyways. So. That is a little worrisome to me that they ban TA, though. Because if you ban TA, that means, as you mentioned, you think the Timber saw a safe lane. But, like, even I know that Mason doesn't play Timber. Right. So I knew, I knew it was out bad Timber, so I don't know. They they, they need need to do more research. Okay. All right. They should know that. Come on. Come on, Hellraisers. <laughs> the game. I mean, it was, you know, it, it, there's a little time between these, and it, maybe they're just, like, so worried about it, but I'm, I'm with you. It's tough. It's a tough one. Yeah, it's, 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 it's tough out there, man. There's a lot of stress for these teams. Hellraisers, they do need a safe later swift ending. Whew, that is a tough lineup to play any core against. You play a BKB core, you get destroyed by Enigma. You play normal physical damage core, you get owned by Sven. Razor is pretty decent, though. I would say it works very well versus the Sven. Um, but he's not going to have an easy time in lane. And the team fight is okay, average. Now, I mean, like you said, uh, there's just no hero that's perfect in this situation. They need a lot out of that last hero, and Razor will do what he can. Um, 
One yeah. thing I will mention, somebody pointed this out on Twitter, shout out to MRP, Mason has no Sven cosmetics. Lame. Right? Like, how do you have no Sven cosmetics? Is that's like your hero or one of your heroes? You have to play, you have to pick those jester pants, man. The jester pants? Yeah. The yeah. ones that make you look like a clown? It's like, it's like blue and orange striped <laughs> pants. They are the, they were one of the earliest cosmetics. And I always equip them on Sven. That sounds amazing. Yeah, they're so bad, they're good. Okay. It's yeah. like the Earthshaker uh, log. He has a log with a little leaf coming out of it. That's his totem. <laughs> okay. It's supposed to be his badass totem that yeah. like stuns and causes ripples across the earth, and it's a gosh darn it log. Yeah. <laughs> that ain't that ain't hype. That's not good. Although the the jester pants sound like MC Hammer pants. I don't know what they look like, but I'll take your word for it. You uh, have you not seen Can't Touch This music video? I don't watch that much mainstream stuff. I'm the worst with pop culture right. references. I'm going to show this to you later, and I'm going to do the dance for you, and you're going to love it. Okay. It's great. It's Can a little shuffle. Can you video record it and put it up on Twitter? Yeah, we'll do okay. it. We'll take care of that for Excellent. you. Excellent. Maybe I'm just pretending I don't know, so you'll do this for me. <laughs> it's a possibility. That's the next level play. It's the next level gamble. Absolutely. Maybe I'm just that next level. After watching the One, one Night Werewolf, I don't think so. It was what? I wasn't even in One Night Werewolf. Oh, yeah, you're right. I That's next level. level. Wow, are you trying to next level baby or something? <laughs> what the heck, dude? I played zero games of Werewolf here. <laughs> All right, too many next levels going on, but it is time for game number two. We're going to have to see what ends up happening here if Hellraisers have been able to solve their woes or if DC are going to continue this streak and finish it off 2 0. Trev. Spot out Milan. Got some nice little taunts going on over there. Classic. Let's talk to me a little bit about this matchup. Queen of Pain versus Timbersaw. Timbersaw's fine. Just need a little bit of region in the early levels. Nothing. This is not a terribly exciting matchup. Yeah, I'll tell you that. All right. Farm. People get their farm. Yeah. Down bottom, uh, it's J4 and 3-3. We saw dual lanes out of everybody last time around. Um, obviously, Lich makes... Uh, a lane a lot harder for anybody to lane into it. And Mason, do you think that's going to like really affect his farm? Do you, do you send Bulba away to go stack so he can catch up later since he's going to be a little bit behind in levels? Uh, depends on who's actually down there. They're having a Lich down or sorry, a Razor down there. Oh. So Razor versus Sven is an awful matchup, and they're actually going to switch lanes at the start. So you see Sven heading up to the top. That's, that's the worst lane for you, I would say, Sven versus, uh, Sven versus Razor. I actually lost this lane, and that was that was our final game of our qualifier run. Was playing Sven versus Razor. It's it's actually just terrible, uh, at least in the early game. You don't have enough move speed to get away from the from the link early because you're not going to start off with boots first unless you like know for a hundred percent sure that you're against Razor, which you shouldn't be. Right? You'd much rather be paired versus something like the Legion Commander on top, which is going to be a weird one on one matchup because Sven, you almost never see solo in the off lane, but. If they don't have anyone over there, that's pretty good. And Boba is going to be heading up there. Yeah. Milan, I mean, he's going to be trying to keep Abed back, but it looks like he's still able to, you know, stay within experience range, should be able to move up a little bit later and get some farm for himself. So they don't need to be that worried about trying to give him help as it's just a 1v1. 4F has both of his camps blocked, though. He was looking to use his Eidolons for something, but J4 is more than prepared, so I like that. They did block these two spawns, and Forever just going to have to sit in lane. There is no Sentry Ward up for the Chicken, too, so they're going to just have to do it in lane. Oh, and oh, and it gets eaten immediately, that Observer Ward on bottom. Oh, that's you really see frustrating. The, see the corpse of it. <laughs> I was looking up top as well, where 3 3 was taking a little bit of a beating from Bulba. It was taking Glaives first and is just going to keep the harassment up. But, mm, old school. Bottom lane, yummy, yummy Eidolons all going to drop now. Dubu is off to the side, but it's still really hard to. Actually he, he's happen. actually just soaking up experience. He's not too keen to considering for it. Already going to be at a lack of experience being first of Lich. That's the thing. Everyone just like, ah, oh, give me some of that experience, please. <laughs> yeah. And rune control now also coming from Dubu. He's going to make sure that he can get bottom one if it comes to that, or at the very least the bounty rune to boot. 3-3. Three, three, maybe going to go for a pull. Very passive leaning stage again. And Abed gets an invis. Probably the least helpful rune for him at this point. 
Yep. I'll see us going. Co-op Timber, almost the same. Sven doing very well versus the LC, thanks to Bulba. And bottom lane, Razor doing very well versus Enigma. Enigma not doing poorly, though. Yeah, I was wondering if we might have seen some lane swapping shenanigans oh, uh, going Abed on. Oh, might die in mid. He does get clock work cog right up his head. Wow. Well, certainly not what we would have expected. I guess, though, having two in lane, whereas DC's been sort of playing a little bit more greedy, has its drawbacks. Certainly so. But likewise, it's top lane that, as you mentioned, Sven having a great time, and LC had to run to the jungle and take out a few camps there. Does have level 3 now, and it looks like Dubu is rotating in as well. But this is scouted out by the clockwork, I believe. There was a quick ping. Timberstock doesn't have one in chain, so he's going to have a very hard time dealing with this clockwork that constantly invades his lane, especially because the clock matchup, especially with ganks, is... Uh, not going to be easy for his supports to help out. Well, again, Dubu. To the side, they find the stun. The roll in is going to come. The slow is there. 3 3 in a little bit of trouble. Wants to turn, wants to fight. Still, Arcane Kurt's there as well. And with Milan in the area, everybody has to be a little bit more careful. They will have no more press the attacks. But they have isolated Mason, actually. And he's brought down very low. So they turn the gank around and make him think twice. Yeah, 3-3 three is having a pretty good time out here, it looks like. Okay, well, much better start to game number two, at least, for Hellraisers. Um, you know, last time it was obviously the lack of team fight that caused Hellraisers to fall so far behind. Uh, do you think that they've solved that problem in the draft, and if everything sort of stays no. the same, it's going to be... No? Okay. Their lineup's significantly worse <laughs> at team fight <laughs> compa compared to DC. You have, you have Enigma, who is the king of team fight. And then you have Silencer on top of that. Like, those two alone are really good. And then you have Earth Spirit. Like, so much Silence and Control coming out. And on the meantime, you have Hellraisers. They have a guy, maybe like one and a third BKB piercing uh, ultimate so they can stop the Black Hole. Then Shaking Frost and Cockroach Cook Shot all count as a third because it's that unreliable. Um, and, like, Quap is pretty decent, but not, nothing compares to Black Hole in this game. It's a big bad wolf. It's like a, it's like a piggy house made of what, what would be the equivalent of a black hole in this game? It's like What's made that? out of like titanium or something. Yeah, it's like you know sticks versus well, anything really. But Abed actually manages to get away from that one. Quick little chains. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think that uh, bricks does not encapsulate the extent yeah. to which black hole owns. <laughs> Ti titanium house, dude. That's what it is. All right, I like it. Can you even build a house out of titanium? It sounds expensive and not very effective. What if you're trying to keep the big bad wolf out, man? Yeah, I know. You know what it is, actually? It's a spaceship. That's what it is. <laughs> Piggies. Build a house and just launch it into space. Like, okay, see you later, wolf. Yeah, that's right. That's the way of it. I, I, I am not sure. It, 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 I mean, but that's not, like, is that so much of an issue, though, this game? Like, are Hellraisers really. looking to try and play it differently? It feels like, you know, they would have recognized the team fight would be an issue. It seems more like, yeah. hey, you would think so. You would think that they know that Abed played Timber, but... A lot of times, I think these teams get more cre uh don't get enough credit, and a lot of times, I think they're actually like, we give them too much credit. Okay. Because a lot, there's just so many more factors for them. Like, we can think about the teams, like, you know, generally pretty freely without bias, and sometimes they're just like, there's just so many things going on internally in the team that we don't know about that may affect their thinking, right? No. Just because uh, when you play with certain guys for a pretty long time, or you're influenced by other people, whether it's like watching other teams or a coach, sometimes you just get uh, your, your mindset changes a little bit. Dubu in no man's land. That was a little bit awkward. Uh, he's going to TP away, and looks like he does get out of this one, but like dropped the stone like he wanted to roll in or wanted to stun, but didn't end up happening. I bet has no stats on him. Spooky. Yeah, spooky not reactive. He's gonna get out of there. Um, does have level six up. Kaiser also has Sonic Waves. If anybody wants to come in, they go and mess with him. Get a quick little jump. Kill that, a guy. That casual cloak though is gonna make it very difficult. Well, 
I mean, it, it, it just feels like right lane. now they're I, setting up. Bubble might run into Milan. Oh, no. Don't do it. We got vision, but they don't quite see him. Did they ping it? Do they know? I don't know. I would assume that Milan would have <laughs> went on him if he saw him. <laughs> they're actually going to get out of there instead. They're like, I don't want any part of this. Bulba, you're going back in. Run away from Milan. I don't think he's... Well, so meanwhile, Black Hole going to get canceled immediately or turned off. I'm not exactly sure what went on right there, but uh, regardless, it was not Swift Ending dying. So Black Hole down. Oh, it must have been... Was it Lich ulti? No, he doesn't have ulti. I don't know what went on there. Oh, now for his dead. Okay, that was a kerfuffle. That was a, that was a cluster. And Mason's just going to try and back out now. They have vision over to him. But with Dubu there protecting, I don't know if they can kill. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened to Black Hole. I wasn't actually watching. Did it just last for half a second? Yeah, it's somewhere around there. I guess it could have been Milan with Battery Assault, but it didn't look like he was close enough. He is going to run into Mason now. Actually eats his way through. The stun comes out, though. Mason trying to stay alive. Will not happen, though. And now Forev shows back up. Would have loved to have a Black Hole Swift. He's actually blocked off by the creeps, but he can't quite finish him off either. Kaiser showing up in time if they wanted to try and turn there, but it looks like they're just going to back out. Dubu low on mana and HP. I don't think that Milan can kill him. Hellraiser is slight early game advantage with the Lich. I would say about par what you would expect with the Lich. However, they did lose the Mercy One Tower. That's a big loss right there. That's one of the downsides about having a Timber Saw. He's kind of like DK, except he does a lot less damage to towers, but he's similarly annoying in the fact that he can just stay in lane and die. And will chip away at your tower if you ever leave the lane. And that's what Kaiser wants to do. You know, you're, you're a queen of pain. You don't want to just sit passively there. And Abed has now made the rotation up top and should be able to tank the tower if he wants to since he'll have that maxed out reactive armor. So Bulba there to help out. Hellraiser is still struggling to find an answer. Is he actually talking about that for that? Oh, he's going to back out. So they throw out another stun. Doesn't quite connect. Clockwork. This Razor is getting so much. You would expect Enigma and Razor to be somewhat equal, I would say. Like, Forever denies his own creeps. This denies uh, Swift Ending creeps. But Razor has... Uh, ha yeah, Razor should not have as easy of a time because Eidolon cooldown is lower than the cooldown of Sacrifice, at least in the early game. Top lane. Yeah, long lane. Abed doesn't have enough mana. The Chakram is finally going to be enough to finish him off and saved himself alive long enough so that way Salter could get a little bit involved in the intel. Yeah, this race is actually going to be pretty big. Oh, I wonder if he's going to be tanky enough to actually deal with the Midnight Pulse by Bull. Or uh, deal with the Sven so that Sven will not back to the Could be a possibility. I could see this working out well for Hellraisers. Okay. But so I still think DC Steam is like really strong. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been talking all about the strength of Black Hole and the inability for Hellraisers to effectively cancel it, but at the end of the day, when Black Hole's on cooldown, or it doesn't really cancel matter. early yourself. <laughs> there you go. That's the other possibility. All right, 3-3. Three, three. Getting ran at by Abed. They also have this creep here as well, and Mason is off to the side, ready to throw out a stun, which would prove the death of 3-3. Three, three. There's a jump forward. They got the Chakram. They've got the world of death. A whole heck of a lot of damage, although you press the attack it off, and now actually decided to turn and go for the duel. Is he going to be able to find this kill? It looks like the answer is uh, maybe? Question mark? Possibly. He has himself another chain, but it's not enough. They do bring down that Timber. Timber is just had not enough mana at the start of the fight. I think if he were able to uh, dump his full burst onto the LC, he might have died, but he had mana for like one shot from at that point. He didn't. He was out of mana when he killed the LC, and that was like a minute ago. All right. And now that will propel 3-3 on his way to get a Blink Dagger. Enigma just finishing off his Midas was able to deal some damage to that bottom tier 1 tower. And it looks like it might just go down with the Catapult. Glitch not quite able to find that deny. And so tower is going down both mid and bottom. That looks like DC thinking about making that effort up towards top yet again. Oh yeah, Razor going the Moose Feed build. 
Although no BOTs. Sad. Do you ever take the movement speed build uh, talent with the move speed build? 15 agility. Yeah. It's like, okay, would you rather have a wind lace and then some? So like 300 gold worth of movement speed, or would you rather have a blade of lacrity and a half? So it's like 1500 gold versus like 300. And you do need both stats. It's not like one's highly prioritized or whatever. Agility's good. Two armor, a lot of damage, attack speed. He actually really needs a tax speed on the hero because he's going a movement speed build, so no treads. No, no attack speed there. Uh oh. Mason runs into a clockwork, and now clockwork, maybe it's trouble. Actually, decided to turn this back around. The global silence comes out, and a little bit of uh, dis-synergy there. Dubu is going to get interrupted and taken down, but he does keep his carry Mason alive, at least for the moment. Stuns are now going to go for the TP. Can he get up? Cogs push back. Oh, it was so close, but Mason is indeed going to die. Remember when he said like, yeah, Sven's good with the Enigma, but he's also bad versus the Clockwork. And the Clockwork has just been hounding him all all game. From the early laning phase to him like dealing with his Ancients, and I think even in the team fights, the problem because Sven's not farm. He doesn't have like, he doesn't have BKB. He doesn't have a lot of move speed. Sometimes we'll see like the SMY build come out, and he's just not going to be able to maneuver around these fights. And the Black Hole, it might get casted, but... They, are they really going to have the follow-up to do so if Sven doesn't have enough damage? I guess Sven does a lot of damage without that many items. Mm -hmm. It's just more the mobility that we're questioning. Right. Well, and, and there is a lot of things to hold him in place. Even after the Black Hole is down, it usually is a pretty nice setup for the Earth Spirit combo. Yep. Not to mention the fact that Timbersaw is going to be dealing a good bit of damage within the space of a Black Hole as well, I would imagine. But he, he died twice. He was on yeah. his way to be, like, the big baller in town certainly hasn't been able to maintain that type of level of farm that we would love to see out of Abed. Yeah, and Razor's, Razor's getting nice, nice and fast. And he's going for S and Y on top of that, so... That's... He, I think that build gives you like 500-ish move speed, I would say, uh, with the S and Y. With another wind lace after the drums. Right. Oh wait, he doesn't have BOTs. I think it's less than 500. Yeah, right now he's running around with them activated. 375? Or no. That's without activation. Okay. And look at this setup down bottom. They're just waiting for somebody to come and contest. But it doesn't look like that's what DC are interested in. The bottom tower will fall. And God, if they could somehow manage to find a pickoff on these heroes, they jump forward, find Milan. The cogs are there. Stun as well. Silence to follow, but Dubu. Drop in and die in. Milan, is he going to be able to play his way out of there? They're trying to jump through, are going to be able to find that kill, and now the follow-up one. Trying to catch this Razor. Swift ending. Just be going down here in just a second. They get the duel onto Enigma. No black hole this time. And Swift ending also will get out. DC in trouble. He ended up breaking that just for a moment. And now Abed trying to escape yet again. Can he make the escape? New rolling boulder. Went for the kick as well. The silence to follow. Trying to escape. But I think that Hellraisers are dealing a crucial blow to DC. How did they get there so fast? We just saw three heroes at the T1. They were really quick at coming in to save the Razor. Razor's had a really good game so far. This CS being in the off lane has been astounding. These black holes are he went for the Midnight Pulse first that time around, I think. And, you know, obviously you want to be able to get whatever damage out that you can, but uh, maybe in that instance you end up throwing it down. Team fight looks different. It's easy to hindsight that stuff, 2020, obviously, but um, just a little bit unfortunate for DC that time around. It's also just really tough for his Clockwork. Like, if Clockwork is better, it's all going. He's going to be trying to get Black Hole. And if you really want to take that gamble that your Black Hole might be ca canceled instantly, yeah, doesn't sound good. Balan has been just everywhere, though. He's been setting up. Oh, and Abed. Speaking of which, they got the duel. Oh, a huge win right here, as they are going to be able to take down the Timber Saw. No reactive stacks at the start of that one. Mason going to be forced to go for the Blink next. They still can fight. Black Hole and Blink are almost up on Forever, but they are giving a lot up in the meantime. Two kills at DC's name to Hell Racers 10. It's kind of the, a little interesting thing, too. The change that came about with Black Hole where heroes get, like, you know, swirled around yeah. inside of it, it actually is kind of, I guess, a buff for Clockwork against him. Because yep. it pulls in, potentially, for the battery assaults. Well, it's also... It also makes it harder for him to hook shot, though. 
Right. That's so, true. That's a little bit of both. Overall net. I won't say negative. Net negative for clock? Yeah, I think that's negative. Because once it gets BKB, which is usually going to happen, I go up. Yeah, black hole in that time, and Dubu gets out. He's able to escape. I think that's definitely worth it to try and shut down some of that momentum that they had been building on the Queen of Pain. Yep. Pops the one that you really want to shut down, I think. Razor is like way easier to catch on the black hole because he just has a lot of move speed. I think Quap with the blink can be way more annoying. Especially if you get like Shadow Strike on 4F, it's going to be very typical for him to actually blink into the fights. So, Quap, the early Yules, I would say extremely important versus Global Silence. You always want a way to remove Silence, I think, as Quap. BKB kind of out of style, I would say, on Quap. So, Yules, much more natural tendency for the hero. And J4 is also going to be going back for this medallion. So Roshan is sort of in their long-term sights, more so than it felt like it was last game, at least. Yeah, long-term sights the right term. Razor is actually pretty terrible at Roche. Yeah. You generally won't have any damage going into Roche. Uh, it's not like a Sven. You can just get damage on command. You have to like be close to a hero and take away a lot of damage and be close to the Roche. But Dubu in no man's land as 3-3 eyes him out. Oh, they're looking. They're jumping. They're finding. That they are going to be able to take this kill on the whole time. Clockwork waits off to the side, looking to see if he can find a secondary pickoff. Is he within range of the hook shot? Not quite. So they won't be able to go for the follow-up kill onto Ferev. At least for now. And they see Mason. Mason's got it with his reward as he heads for the Ancients. So they know that this tower is pretty much pretty. No need for everyone to be there. And actually, Clock's looking for a plus one as he... Wow, he's going oh in. Oh my goodness. He's super ready. <laughs> he got that creep all right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it happens. It was a nice shot. He still makes Mason fear for his life. I'm like, oh my god, where do they have observer wars? This guy sees me. Yeah. No, it's true. Milan's a killer, man. I like that. Yeah, he's a he's a scary guy, and it, I mean he's been making the plays this entire game three one and four. Certainly, uh, he talked about the danger of clockwork against Sven, and seeing it here, they're not at that point though where they can just run away from the game. They're, they haven't quite snowballed and propelled themselves to a point where I think they can feel comfortable winning any team fight. Firstly, they, they don't have the better team fight card. Secondly, they, their network is just very paltry and they have a lich and i think like lich you generally want slightly more net worth than now but looking to change that not enough dual damage up on three three let's get more than 24. yeah it's got to make it happen and they are moving in now with a whole heck of a lot of heroes but likewise dc sort of mirroring the movements and trying to back away before things get too testy believe that Abed heading back towards mid this might be the opening that they're looking for he doesn't have any reactive armor stacks up right now and while they don't have vision of him himself they won't see that chakra but Abed realizing the potential danger will back out and it looks like Hellraisers will be content to take the tier 2 tower in the bottom lane that's probably a call from they know that their jungle was warded because of the earlier clockwork play on this vent so I think that play actually might have turned around and bite them because they they DC don't feel safe in that area because of that. So that causes DC to just be super unwilling to take a fight anywhere close to that area. But 3-3 looking for a blink duel in mid. Is 4F going to poke his head out far enough in order to get dueled? Now they have the vision there again. Drop down with the rocket flare. And that might be what pushed 4F back. Never know. He might have never had any intentions of pulling the creep wave any further. But DC dodging the ganks, pushing out the lanes. And I guess waiting most likely for Mason BKB. Is that what we're sort of waiting on? Or I think they're waiting for HR to push up into the shrine. Okay. And then take the fight there. And with the fight with the back on the shrine. But they aren't biting. I think it's more of a positional thing than an item thing. All right. Mason BKB is important. But if he gets linked up, he's still going to have to run away during the BKB. So it's not indefinite if I win for the... That keeps on throwing this out. It was a Sanjin Yasha also done for the Razor, so it's going to be quite hard to outrun it. We've talked a lot about this movement speed build. Um, in the way that these team fights sort of develop, uh, you talked about the importance of positioning. 
I mean, it's obviously going to be Clockwork trying to jump in, but how did DC respond? Is it like just immediately jump forward and black hole any of the cores, or...? Blink black hole with global. That's great. They don't have a counter to global right now. Okay. Uh, as long as Clockwork doesn't have battery assault uh, already going, and is already close to the club, which is generally pretty safe to, for DC to screw. Still could happen, though. Milan is going for the anti global silence item. The, you could go for BKB, Yules, or Lotus Orb, but usually we see BKB or Lotus Orb, and he will be choosing the Lotus Orb. I guess you can go green too, but when was the last time a hero built in that piece? <laughs> I think we saw one on a support Naga Siren earlier today from TNC. We'll talk about dead items. <laughs> I think it's. Uh, we'll see. Or it ends up coming at the rest of the group stages for now. Certainly not the case. Like you mentioned, Lotus Orb's there. DC going to TP away. More things. Oh, he might hit it. Go into the scan. Do oh, oh, my he spotted God. him. Do -boo. Do -boo. Dual damage. That one is easy for Hellraiser. Swift ending. Finds the kill, but it's more dual damage. Only 38 still on the Legion, but every little bit helps. Abed uh, still getting pretty big. Enigma almost has his level 15 talent, so his farm is about to get out of control. Yeah, that's what you love to see. The Midas cooldown reduced, as well as just the ability to keep taking those team fights with the Black Hole. Yeah, Blink BKB Black Hole is almost online. It will pretty close to coincide with a level 15, and Sven has his Black Hole. So I think these are almost ready to fight, not necessarily based on position. And Hellraiser's. You mentioned that they had the medallion earlier, but I don't think that's going to be enough for them to take down the big bad Roche himself in this House of Rocks. Yeah, it seems unlikely at best. Dubious. Dubious indeed. <laughs> oh. I mean, at a certain point, though, that's kind of like what you have to do is go for one of those big plays that's not the best, but there's a possibility that oh, it's for Hellraisers? It's risky, though. You'll get holed inside the pit. You don't actually know how close Enigma is to BKB if you're HR. You know that it's close, but it could be plus or minus two minutes. That minus two minutes could be the death. It could cost them the game. I don't think they want to do that. You know, it's weird. It's like it feels... Well, we might have to hold that. Oh, there's, there's smoke. smoke coming out. And I don't think the Hellraisers realize this. There's a ward down right in the area. We'll see if it ends up breaking. They don't have vision. Now they see Bulba here, and Milan goes in immediately right at the start of it. J4 is there as well, looking for the back lines. He's going to be able to get the blink away, though, and Abed trying to find that kill. Breb is there. Black Hole is going to come out, but the global is there as well. There's no way to break this one for the moment. It finally does end up getting interrupted, and Abed missing the chains. The chain frost bouncing. Speaking of which, dual damage as well. Oh, 3-3, three, three, making it happen, and can they kill him off in time before he's able to just walk away? And it looks like the answer is no. Hellraisers building up that lead that they had. 4-14, Four to 14, and DC struggling to find an answer. You see him along with that killer instinct, catches one tiny glimpse of Silencer, doesn't even matter, just instantly hookshots in. And just immediately disrupts the fight. Yeah, it didn't look like a great black hole for Enigma. He only got the Razor. But that's because the Silencer got caught out at the start of the fight due to just... Yeah, he died, like, almost instantaneously. But he that's that's the right thing for him to do. His team can follow up. They can set up a round. He revealed, like, two smokes instantly as he hookshot in. And he instills fear into the life of Sven. It's like, oh, do I save my Silencer? Do I have to be blink past this? Do I need a a BKB before I even blink or I might get cog pushed back into more stuns? Like, do I need to pop my Warcry immediately? Or am I going to get dueled? Like, there's all these things going running on through these cores mine as soon as that hookshot comes out that is just panic all around. Yeah. But there's the Lincolns. He ended up popping God Strength after the fact. Don't know if he spotted that one on Kaiser, but it does end up meaning that Hellraisers get away with another one and God Strength is going to be down. Yes, no. No black hole. No BKB from Enigma, actually. Well, scary stuff indeed. And, you know, we were talking about all the, you know, the great team fight that DC has, but it doesn't matter if they build up this type of a net worth lead, and now they found themselves a Dubu looking for more. Milan catches two inside the cogs. They're forced to pop the BKB, but Mason is static linked, and now the Chain Frost chasing him down. The right click's coming in from Kaiser, and people drop into the ground. Hellraisers are back in a big old way. Those are the team fights that you're looking for. Wow, just, I mean, incredibly well, incredibly well played from Milan this game. He's been 
owning, owning them and making it really easy for his team to play around. It's super easy when your clockwork is a vision of everyone. And like the the Sven had a blink pass too. He just got immediately linked up by the Razor. I think the Enigma got canceled by the Chain Frost. Like everyone was able to do their job because of good old clockwork. Trusty, trusty clock. Yeah, and this was the hero that everybody was sort of expecting to, you know, start uh, make a bigger and bigger impression. And you know, Milan showing why it still is one of the best heroes in the game in that position for roll. Uh, it doesn't really need that many items to do what this offline clock works do. <laughs> You have to go back to the beginning of the draft, though. Remember, we were talking about, okay, Puck, Quap. They're Kaiser's best heroes. They banned out the, the Puck. They were allowed to get the Quap, but they decided, that, okay, we can probably counter Quap with a Silencer Enigma opener. But the Enigma hasn't really been able to do much. It's been very difficult for him to get Black Holes off. And they also did slow down his game heavily with, with the Lich at the start. But DC, looking to make a move. Roshan is up. And I'm wondering even if they were expecting Hellraisers to be in there, but... No such luck at being able to find a big fight, and instead, if they want to go, they're going to need to go for the wraparound. 3-3 three, three is up here by the Shrine. Mason is there with the haste rune, but they don't have enough damage to kill 3-3. Three, three. He has a halberd, so he can just like, he disarm this event. And he's right next to the Shrine, and he can get Solar Crested, and he has Frost Armor, so he has a ton of physical, physical mitigation, even if they do manage to hit through the evasion. They do scan out bottom to see if anybody was wrapping onto the quap. Turns out the answer is no, and instead they're all up top. 3-3. Three, three. 66 dual damage, but more importantly, as you said, that survivability that might allow him to keep one of these DC heroes home and sort of split the attention as quap split pushes. Like, they weren't able to kill the Razor. Razor doesn't have, he didn't have BKB that last fight, and he still was able to survive. So if you trade, hit, trade Legion in for that with some survivability items, he should be able to survive. Okay, I guess Whirling Death would do a lot more damage to him, though. Yeah, hit big strength and all. Yeah, that's the nice part for the Timber at the very least. So this game feels like it's definitely fallen off the rails of where DC wanted it to be, and it's been this slow creep of, uh, you know, gold and experience lead into the favor of Hellraisers. Um, if you're Hellraisers, wh what do you do to sort of secure this advantage? Oops. Before it was... They, they wanted to take Roche earlier, but it was a little bit too risky. But Black Hole is up right now. They aren't taking Roche that quickly. Frost Armor will help them mitigate a lot of damage coming out from Roche, though. Now it's actually only the Razor that's in there. Dubu jumps in. He jumps into nothing. There's nobody there. Now Razor's playing it safe. Kaiser again, going to blink into the pit. They back out. Lich is probably the most important hero in this fight. If he doesn't stop the black hole from 4ev, they could lose everything. No pressure, J4. <laughs> yeah, I talk about pressure. This is uh, a big time situation. Also for 4ev, it not only does he need to make sure that he gets all his items off, but he puts that black hole in the most perfect of places. And Hellraiser's looking like they are just content to farm up, don't want to push the effort too much and get themselves caught in a bad position. But Swift Ending will reveal himself there. Can DC collapse quickly enough? I think the answer is no. So, 4 to 17. More importantly, an 8,000 net worth lead with right around the same amount of experience into the favor of DC. Hellraiser's Going for the split push along the bottom, pressuring in mid at the same time. What did DC need to do at this point? Just keep farming and try and get to the items that allow him to take a fight? Big black hole? Yeah, he needs a black hole, but he's actually not going for Lincoln Spear. So he could counter J4's play of canceling his Chain Frost by getting a Lincoln Spear. But he has an Octarine Cuda, which I would say is very good for Hell Racers. Because all you need to do is just sit super far back with the Lich, get your cast range talent, and just cancel that chain blast, or cancel that black boss. So we'll and without the Lincoln Sphere, that should be an easy way for the Lincoln to the team. But I guess he actually doesn't have he doesn't have a way to get out of global, which is why he's going for the the Lotus Orb, but there is still counterplay to the black hole. It's always a you know, little matter of 
push and pull for this black hole. First, it's going to be very strong at the start when no one has BKBs, and, you have, and then it's going to get even stronger once you have a global, and then once heroes start getting their counters and the cast range and their blinks, it's going to be even more difficult for the lich. Oh, last time I saw the clockwork, he built a blink to blink across to hookshot. That was that was <laughs> awesome. That was actually game-winning stuff. Oh, uh, the dream the walked dream. away. If Milan gets that. You know, it's the cherry on top of what's already a great game. Yep. He might get it after Lotus, maybe. But that was... I, I forgot who did that, but that was one of the sickest clockwork performances. Well, we saw Kaiser and Abed sort of bouncing around back and forth down here bottom, trying to push out the lanes while not putting themselves at risk. And a short pause by Milan. Time to take a second, think about what needs to be done next. Do we have any other big item pickups? Oh, Mason is going over. So Mason, the Lincoln Sphere does, it does block the Razor, but I wonder if he's actually going to prioritize putting on Enigma. Because the Black Hole is so important to the fight that I think I think you'd rather just get linked than have your Black Hole canceled. Okay. It sounds reasonable. Yeah, no, I think so too. I, and I, I think that... Uh, I mean, it, it's all sort of really dependent upon how the team fights break out, because maybe it's a situation where, like, Clockwork is able to hookshot anyways, and then you get linked, and your black hole gets canceled, and suddenly it all goes wrong, but... Yep. Yeah, it's tough. That would be the ultimate. I mean, Mason's been sort of... I, I feel like when, when DC, this uh, iteration of it most recently came about, it was like Mason trying to do everything he could to um, enable Abed to have a great game. But more recently, it's been like him also b being able to pull his own weight and carry. You know, now that he's gotten more into the back into the groove and everything. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. It's a different play style for sure. I would say from when DC first had Mason to now. Different hero. <laughs> Looks like still hanging on for the moment. Hellraiser is not confident in going for any substantial team fight yet, which we've talked about a ton. It makes sense given their lineups. Find these pickoffs, get into more dual damage, and looks like 3-3 with the Shadow Blade. This might be the answer for him, although Timbersaw has already backed off. They spot this out. They only have vision on the clock. But with nobody else showing on the map, they might realize that there's other heroes here. Might be time for HR to get a gem. Actually, they saw him got Roche. First get Roche and then get a gem. Both teams playing very patiently. DC just waiting for their moment to shine. And pick off someone in the side lane. Ideally, Quap. Quap's the hero. Milan. <laughs> just the only one here and the only one showing. Uh, he forces three other heroes to run away. Talk about putting fear into him. Yeah, they don't actually care if Clockwork dies. He's too risky of a gank right now. Uh, Hellraiser's is just going to go right in, try and take down Roshan. Yeah, they did scout out for up with a rocket coming up from a lot, so they have idea of at least one of them. I mean, this is all scouted right now. Radiant have a ward down that spots all of this. And Dubu's coming in. Rosha's going down very slowly. Uh, and Eidolon is now also in the pit, just chilling. He's going to back out. I, I think that's the right decision. Okay, Lincoln Sphere is up. I want to see if they dump it on Enigma as they go for. Are they going to go for a smoke? They have a smoke on Bobo. It might be too obvious right now. There is no shrine up, unbeknownst to DC. But they, I, I still don't think they work. I think they're unsure the shrine is. I think they just assume the train is up. It's much safer to play that way. Well, Abed, it feels like both teams have put themselves in a position to, you know, win a team fight immediately going towards Roshan. Buyback status. Currently, you've got a buyback on Clock and Queen of Pain as well as the Timber Saw, but nobody else across both teams. Rev now making that move. The Shadow Blade that he purchased as well. Ready to walk in. Thinking about dropping the hole, but J4 right behind him. Ah, he's looking. He's trying to find him. Is he going to be able to get them both at the same time? No. 
The roll forward, the kick, the jump forward. Mason stunned. They're dealing a good bit of damage, and that's just going to be the Legion Commander dead. Now, Florev, can he find any more? They're chasing down J4, thinking about dropping it, still holding on to it. The threat of the black hole, just so scary for Hellraisers, and there's not an answer. Suddenly, DC decide to play Dota, and Hellraisers don't exist anymore. That's the way to play it. Just use the threat of the black hole and don't actually cast it. Everyone was waiting for it. Lich was waiting for it. Clockwork was waiting for it. But no, they just steamrolled them with God strength. And now Hellraisers have to take a step back and kind of think about how they're going to approach the fight when black hole isn't even used. Now they buy back expecting that it was going to be a Roche play, but I do like the Shadow Blade over the Octarine. It's not like he was casting black hole and he needs a cooldown reduction. I think uh, getting the Shadow Blade or another item that actually helps him get off his black hole is much more important than having two black holes or a lower cooldown black hole. Finding that perfect one for sure. So now the question for Hellraiser is like, what do you do at this point? Um, smoke up and are they going to try and sneak Roche again or is this just going to be a pickoff play? Pick -off play. They, they do Roche still, as we just saw. They can send an idol on it. Kaiser is pretty far out. They could have easily had him. Dubu, oh, he doesn't quite get the roll away. He needs to get out of there. Does have some stuns to throw out. Aghanim Scepter is there as well. The black hole hits onto nothing for him. Found nobody, but the global is out as well. Is it going to be enough? I don't think so. And Abed just trying to do what he can, but they've already lost Dubu as well, and the damage comes out. J4 is gone. But 3-3 three, is still hard to deal with as well as that Razor. They're starting to bring him low, though, and it's just far too much damage. Kaiser throws out the Sonic Wave, and they have lost their spend. Can Abed carry? Does he do enough damage? For now, I don't think so. He's going to have to get over to this shrine, and now a jump forward for Ev needs to back out. It's a triple kill for 3-3. Three, three. Looking for more. Might be able to make it an ultra. The dual damage to boot. Hellraisers strike back in a big old way. Oh, for Ev. He is probably so disappointed right now. That's one of those fights after you just gaze intently at your monitor and you don't look left or right at your teammates because you know you're going to get that hugely disapproving look if you do or a sigh or something that's just going to bring your morale down a lot. Just look forward, man. Forward facing. <laughs> Woo! That's a tough pill to swallow. You no, know, it is. Yeah, and it, they still did pretty well in the team fight despite having no black hole. Yeah. Again, maybe it's better to not consider this threat. There you go. That, that's why they didn't see it in the middle fight. Just why bother skilling it, right? Yeah, exactly. That would be the ultimate oh mind God. game. That would be <laughs> sick. Never skill Black Hole and just always just walk aggressively in their direction. Yeah. You can, like, even cancel cast the uh, the Midnight Pulse. Oh, yeah. kind of fake it. I'll have to, that'll have to be on my bucket list with Dota. Win a game without skilling Black Hole. I mean, just play any other hero but Enigma and you reach your bucket goal. Win Enigma. Win a game with Enigma without spilling black hole. <laughs> All right. Well, 39 minutes in, 29 or 21 to 9, and it is Hellraisers that take Roshan. 5,000 gold lead, but it still feels like this game is on a knife's edge. The Hellraisers have had the lead for the entire game, basically. But just because of the potential with the team fight of DC, never feels like it's safe lead for them. Yep. That's exactly right. In your estimation, as we have another black hole, this one a little bit better. Catches the Razor, trying to bring him low, and in fact, it's going to kill off him and Milan. Milan tried. Got to give him props for that. Yeah. That's exactly what I saw the clockwork that had a blink do as well. I, I don't even know if it was Milan. It was probably Milan. He, <laughs> like, he blinked across the other side. Four of his team got black holed. And he just hook shot in anyways. He's like, well, I'm, I, we're either going to get four men wiped, five men wiped, or we could turn it around. So that was what it was. And same, similarly there, he's trying to save a big core on his team. But finally, we see Black Hole get some good use from the Enigma. I think he's Black Hole two heroes this game. Is that correct? Just those two? Um, no, they got one other kill with it at I the very beginning. Well, sorry, the razor, the razor, and the clockwork. This one, yeah. I, I don't know if I count that one because clockwork kind of hooked into it. Right. So he's gotten razor twice this game. Yeah. So three heroes in 40 minutes with a black hole. Forever. We need dubious. to be dubious. Dubious. <laughs> Average amounts amount of 
heroes hit with black hole per game. I mean, the thing about it is some heroes, some players hit more with one black hole in like the first like 10 minutes of the game. That's actually a little crazy to think about. But everyone is watching him for the black hole. Like everyone's just waiting for... Oh my god. god. Kaiser, uh, he's taking arcane curse damage, and the boulder smashes a little bit off the mark. Does find the silence, looking for more chakra dodge. Duke, can he get out of there? He's still taking the arcane curse damage, trying to survive through it and see if he can get away without having to pop the Aegis. And in fact, will be able to do it with the regen. And he's level 25. Low life steal. Doesn't need to go home to heal. In the other side of the map, Sven's keeping the lanes pushed out. No black hole for 25 seconds. I don't know if Hellraisers have that exact cooldown down. It's 136 seconds from whenever they cast the black hole last. I, it's easy to forget in the in the middle of the moment to actually take black hole timers down, and it looks like that wiggle room is not going to be enough to push high ground. It's, I mean, it's pretty much non-existent anymore. Three yeah. seconds left. Yeah, Ferev is here and does have that Shadow Blade, so even just standing around this area isn't exactly safe. Oh, wow, and Kaiser already up to Bloodthorn now. And I'll well, see if he ends up getting that Aegis pop, still hanging on to it. Uh, 25 quality is so good. Yeah, this is scary. So many different ways for Queen of Pain to stay survivable. Does your DC game plan ever change? Like, is it always just, like, defend high ground with Enigma? I mean, ideally, you can get black holes outside of the base, but they don't have great vision on the map. And now the anti global style titles are coming out, so that might not even be a guaranteed plan. One Lotus Orb is already up in the clockwork. Lich probably wants that level 20 talent for that 120 GPM. I think it's time to start feeding Tumps for him, because this could be a long game. And still no tier 3 towers really taken or. I mean, there's a good amount of damage on the bottom one, but it doesn't feel like it's going to end up really making that big of a difference. Here in our last game of the day, at least on this stream, not sure what's going on in all the other ones. Swift Ending has a butterfly queued up for himself. And 3-3 is down here in the bottom lane alone. Could potentially find a pickoff if Enigma... Moves out and pushes too far, but might be the death warrant farm as well. 3-3, three, three, they end up actually finding the kill, and Kaiser is going to be the one that gets jumped on. There's no way to save him there. They do end up throwing out a press the attack, but, well, they're just going to black hole immediately. And Global, the follow is, oh my god, that's a lot of hate. Looking for more. They're not quite going to be able to catch up to 3-3, three, three, who is going to jump away towards the north. In the meantime, Razor is split pushing the top lane, or at least trying to. They do have the Yule Scepter lift up onto 3-3, three, three, pops the BKB. Now they need to come back, deal with Swift Ending. Hook shot, counterplay, caught on to Dubu, needs to get out. Eidolons are there trying to help him out. But the double Chakram, Dubu does end up dying to Milan, trying to escape as well. He'll get ran down here, and it looks like he will fall as well. So trade-off so far is a two for one. Worth for them. HR just can't get enough accomplishment between the black core cool cooldowns. I think that's a big issue. They're just losing big core after big core every black core. Cool. And looks like Enigma's going for Lincolns of his own, so he doesn't have to so they can block both the Chain Frost and the static link. And yeah, it's getting to that point, as a lot of Enigma games do, where Enigma Enigma's black core cool is uncancelable. And the problem with that is it's near impossible for cores to itemize again. Yeah. You get more HP, Midnight Force does more damage. You get BKB, Midnight Force does more damage. Uh, you get Aegis, you just die twice. So just like you there. Okay, actually, there's no way to reduce the pure damage. I think there's like some fringe cases where you can... Uh, like Lone Druid, for example. It's very hard to... like, like Even if you black hole the... The uh, bear. The hero. Like, the bear still does a lot of damage. There's, like, Wraith King, who has two lives all the time. Uh, there's Alchemist, I think, with, that we saw just has, like, insane health regeneration. So, Midnight Pulse doesn't do that much damage because it doesn't have that much HP. And he just regens it all through. Um, there's some heroes that can deal with it innately with their, uh, with their skill set. But in terms of item builds versus it, it's just almost not. And if 
Enigma is really scared of you, or you have like tons and tons of heal, you you'll just get uh axed. You'll just right. get midnight pulse into ag and you'll just definitely die. So it's uh HR coming upon tough times here. They didn't want it to get this point in the game, but they had a fantastic start. But without a way to build high ground, we talked about the Razor going to the Moosey build. Maybe a Scepter build would have allowed them to get in the game earlier, but maybe they would lose some more ahead. So there are some things to consider going to the later game if HR are going to regress some of the other builds and go for riskier plays, like going for Roach that would have taken a couple minutes, but would have opened them up to potentially earlier black holes. Well, and I, I'm also sort of thinking about the way that this game works. There's maybe the closest thing to any of those uh, like fringe cases you were talking about is probably like a Quap Mjolnir on herself. Yeah, that's and actually a good call. Life stealing from that, but even that's not great. <laughs> yeah, it's not great, but it's, it's not. Ooh, it's not awful. Shadow Blade forever. He, he's walking forward. Abed broke the smoke on it, so they know that there's somebody here. And well, Rev Yolo it right there. Apron, though, they jump in. They're able to find him. This is the Razor controlled for the moment. And look at the damage coming out from Mason. They need to back out. And it does look like Swift Ain able to make the retreat. There's a big old black hole. Drop down onto two. Is not enough? It looks like it is for Milan. Not quite for 3-3, who goes for the Shadow Blade and BKB run away. So one for one so far. Forev still looking for an opening with the Malefice, possibly able to run him down, but doesn't quite catch on to Kaiser. And instead, it's going to be J4. The pesky Lich who gets taken down in his stead. Does Kaiser get spotted? It looks like no, just inside those trees. Uh, what? Oh, he blinked in right as Mason was over there. Oh, how unlucky. Kaiser now going to try and blink away, and it looks like he will make his escape still. Scary. I thought for sure they had him there. DC, I think, should have walked away too. They didn't get the stun on the Razor uh, before he BKB, the follow-up boulder, and then... Uh, he just walked away with BKB, and then they also didn't kill the LC during the Black Quad. I don't think anyone was close enough. Tipper probably could have gotten there, but I think he was focused on dealing with uh, some of the other heroes. But still, DC still rearing their fierce head in these team fights, showing that as the game goes further and further on and Enigma gets more and more items, he is becoming increasingly. It really does feel like. You know, the, this is sort of the other side of the, the coin is that you have 3-3, who's also quite good at dealing this damage. And in fact, he is going to find Abed, pops the BKB in with all of these heroes here. That is a big pickoff. Wow, that Bloodthorn. It's crits galore. That was much needed. Granted, you have buyback on Timber, not to mention he's back up very quickly because of the Bloodstone charges. Yeah, oh. it's still a big kill. Slow him down a little bit. I guess he's actually sex slotted. He can pick up Lotus. Lotus not super important. Reflect duel, who cares? Oh, get off blood. blood. That's definitely a big one. Yeah. Well, um, the other things that we do have, level 25s that are online, it is Fen's extra damage, so 65 plus the Daedalus, and we've also seen the Razor go for the plus 14 static link damage. Um, a couple other ones that I'm sort of curious about if we get to that stage is going to be Legion Commander. Uh, we've seen, uh, I think, MSS taking the 40 dual damage bonus. Do you like that versus the press the attack cooldown this game? That's a really tough call, I think. I don't know how much lo game is, how much longer this game is going to last. This could be like a, I don't know, like an 80 minute game. And, or it could just end really quickly. The benefits of getting press the attack are what? Debuffing Whirling Death, debuffing Sven's ult, uh, Sven's Storm Hammer, so that he can uh, you you can kite the Sven a little bit better. I guess I think our spirit spirit stuff? better. I think he needs to be like super super fat because the, the way that it, the fights are going on right now, Black Hole eliminates one core. The core is usually dead. It, it didn't happen last fight, but generally that's the way it should go. And then you need one of the other two cores to step it up. And Razor is really big. Quap is really big. And as the game goes over, you want 3 3 to get really big too. So you want him to be a black hole threat. You want him to kind of absorb the black hole so that one of the other two cores can do damage. So I think, uh, yeah, I think I would advocate for a dual damage. But I honestly, I don't think press the attack is that bad. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's still very, very good damage. And debuffing, like, Whirling Death too is pretty good. Yeah. 
I'm curious to see what Lich is going to get. Oh, uh, yeah. 35 Frost Armor or the attacks apply if he's slow. Here mid, they're walking uphill. J4, he ends up breaking the smoke as he walks up there. 3-3 three, three does have duels with Shadow Blade. They are going to lose one, maybe going to lose more. Swift Ending trying to make his escape as well. Abed is chasing. There's a lot of damage here. He pops the BKB. Dubu jumped forward and rolling forward even further, able to dodge away from that one. They're still chasing. Doesn't have a whole lot of duration left on that BKB, and in fact, is going to be ran down there. So they find themselves another set of kills. It's going to be Kaiser cutting the creep wave. And DC, Paul Roche. The big problem is his race is like, his BKB the race is so low. They're getting clobbered. Uh, the, like, Sven doesn't even need an MKB to deal with a butterfly. That's how bad it is. And he might actually need a pike. Oh, Kaiser, they're thinking about it, they are. They're just going to jump forward. Black Hole, the lawn ends up canceling it, but still, that Quap is going to die. So, too, will the clockwork. It was a good shot, a good attempt, but it wasn't enough. Ouch. And, I mean, you were talking about it. It's, it's starting to feel like more and more DC are just building up these team fight wins. And, and when was the last time that Hellraisers really won a fight? It's been all pickoffs. I think they need to take ages and try and end the game, like, right now. Uh, Quap is six-slotted already. Uh, Razor is... Razor's actually only five-slotted. It's a little surprising, considering uh, the, the state of the game. But they're, I, I don't think they're getting that much stronger relative to DC right now. Whereas Enigma still can get refresh rate off. He doesn't have those yet, and he's still destroying the team fights. That's really problematic. And it looks like DC are going to go high ground. Not giving HR any Ruby breathe. Definitely the right play there. It is still Black Hole on cooldown for another 74 seconds. So maybe they can make a team fight here and they're going to be able to jump forward. There's already going to be the duel onto the spin. A hell of a lot of damage coming through and she is indeed going to win that one. Shrine Pop trying to keep J4 alive. And in fact, it's going to happen. Abed still barely alive here, but that Timber Chain didn't get him outside of the base. Jubu is looking for a counter initiation play. The stun comes through. The hook shot, though, it's still going to keep Abed in play. Sonic Wave is there and that's going to be a dead Timber Slime. Maybe they can find more on their way out. Dubu, does he get caught? No! That battery assault just barely off the mark. So, Hellraisers win an important one. There's still buyback, but Roche is open. Yeah, they definitely need it. The thing about not having buyback and pop, that's all you home in on is Dubu. Black hole on him, or, or Sven for that matter. Sven can also go for the kill on him, but you go all in for Quap and then you just end the game there. So. This age is, I would say, definitely a better play than going for the uh, right now. Because it looks like you probably still can get the Sven buyback. Enigma will have Black Hole by the time Sven's up. Timber's up. I don't think Sven has the buyback here. I don't know. It's pretty risky. Losing your T3s and losing your Shrines at the cost of a buyback. This is, this is one of the reasons why people hate playing cores. Is this late game situation where it's like, oh, do I buy back or not? Yeah, they could lose a lot of their face on this, but not if Abed clears the entire creep wave. But Kaiser's already on bottom. Yeah, they're doing it. Kaiser going to try and hit this. The stun and the chakram's not going to connect. They are going to use the glyph here. Frev almost got caught by Milan as he was going over to buy the Octarine core. And, well, Black Hole is back off of cooldown. Seven more seconds. We'll see if they stick around after the melee barracks falls. 3-3 looking for his opening, and the black hole is indeed going to come, and they found themselves the Razor. He does have Bly Black. Bly Black. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but uh, they will be able to make that escape, it looks like, after taking the racks. At least for the moment. Oh, Shadow Blade Milan. Wow, what a player. Yeah, they won't catch him either. Only one death. That's insane. That's crazy. But now they might have to the Razor come back. Well, they went for the person with other ages. Razor had cheese, but can't pop it while Black Cold. Are they going to try and fight here with the buyback to TP to the shrine? This could be... This could be the fight. Well, they're starting it off right, and they've found themselves the spend. He is gone in an instant. Can they get any more forever? Trying to get himself away, and... Well, Kaiser getting healed back up from all of that damage, but the Chakram ended up canceling it. He is going to lose that Aegis. 3-3, looking for another opening. Still 30 seconds before Duel is up. 
So he's looking for that chase, but Abed just deals so much damage here. An impossibility running down this Timbersaw without duel. And they will back out. Thank you. Ah, this is such a risky place for HR. <laughs> if they push high ground, they get black hold, co-op dies, they lose the game. But they want to force the spend buyback right now. So do you actually go high ground or do you wait out for Co-op's buyback? Co-op's buyback is four minutes away. Do you think you can last that long? Or could you want to potentially lose the game right now? It's it, this is mind wreck, like nerve wracking, I would say, for HR. Yeah. It looks like they're going for it. I see the lines. Such a risky play, but it could pay off. They could just kill Sven after he buys back. And, or uh, they could be a whip by Cole coming from Fred. There could be a clockwork hook shot cancel. And it looks like they're actually just going to play it safe and take down Troy. Wait for Queen of Pain to buy it back. But that means they're going to have to play passively for a good four minutes. That's a pretty long time. This late into the game. Yeah. And, and you need, need to keep these lanes pushed out constantly. And you know, constantly pressure DC to make sure that they can't just run down mid and force the issue. Um, I guess if you're DC, do you still feel comfortable taking a fight right now? Like, if you do end up killing that Quap, as you said, it's yeah, an automatic we, oh, win. Oh, definitely take the fight right now. Okay. There's no buyback, or they didn't have to use any buybacks. So I think they're completely okay with taking a fight. I guess the only thing you might want to wait for is like Enigma getting his refresher, but I don't think it's that important. You could kill, you kill Quap, you win the game. That's, that's how you win right now. Look at this. Timbersaw ended up going for an Ethereal Blade as his sixth item, pocketing his Yules. So he doesn't have an answer right now to Global, but he does have a ton of damage. It's also, uh, it's I think, mostly used defensively versus the Legion Commander. Right. So, like Sven, he will kill himself, or he will die to the Legion Commander. But if he's EP'd, maybe not? I, I guess I yeah, will take damage. Which? Quad? Probably, Both yeah. Minimally. Okay, here they go. Still a few minutes oh, left on the buyback for Quad. God, this is so scary. He's farming out this agent camp. You gotta get out of there, buddy. They have a blink. They have a stun with Dubu. They're gonna be able to find it. The black hole down. They got the global silence as well. There's no way to stop this. The jump forward is there. And no answer. Milan couldn't get there in time to break the black hole. 100 seconds. No queen of pain. Eats the cheese. Swift ending. Trying to run away. He at least needs to get out of here. Hellraiser's in trouble. They turn to fight. They want to try and make this happen. But no, the ethereal blade comes out. They're just staring at each other. Look at these guys. There's nothing happening. Rev is falling though because the chain frost is huge. Three three ends up getting eaten up by Mason. They need to buy back on everybody right now to make something happen. They can't just allow these guys to run at their racks, but it might already be too late. Taking them all down. J4 in trouble. He's gonna die to Abed as well. Oh man, and I think that DC have dealt a crippling blow here to Hellraisers. The only thing that's really great online right now for Hellraisers is the frost armor. Frost armor is actually super important at this point in the game. It could mean the difference between Quap respawning or Quap never even respawning le ever in this game. Alright, they're using the fortification to defend that melee barracks. It still will fall. The top lane, look at 3-3. He's walking out here, so he's going to wait for them to move up top and then go for a big duel. When Quap is up, maybe? Or just looking for a big play? Just looking for a big play. Looking for someone, like, they, they could kill the Sven. Sven? Actually, Sven has buyback. He doesn't have buyback. Are they really going for this? They're, they're all moving. Oh, Enigma doesn't have buyback. That's, that's disastrous. All right, buybacks right now. Enigma, no buyback. Earth Spirit, no buyback. Legion, Razor, Quap, and Lich. There are a few heroes that are able to come back from the dead. Wow, they actually survive a Quap buyback. Uh, a Quap death. I don't know who did that much damage to the fights on Hellraisers. Like... The, the LC did nothing. I think it was the Lich. The Chain Frost bounced around like wow. crazy. That's that's insane that a Lich... And there's there's the uh, Mass Eidolons too on Enigma. So 12 Eidolons and Lich still is able to do a lot of damage to Chain Frost. That's crazy. Uh, but yeah, Quap was in the grave. LC was dueling and uh, dueling a Ethereal target. And Clockwork, I mean, he can't really do that much damage in the game. So only Lich and Ra Razor. I suppose Razor also did a fair amount of damage, which is kind of wild because it was 4 on 5 entirely. You know, you talked about J4 getting that level 25. Like, already they don't have great building hitters on DC. If he gets that, it's like going to be healing the towers when Timbersaw punches it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, the 12 Eidolons, though. 
That's pretty good. Enigma still has no refresher. I, I think that is incredibly detrimental to them that they don't have uh, a refresher on him. But a smoke wraparound coming from Hellraisers. Look at this play. They're, they're all the way over in the barracks. They're expecting somebody to be up on the high ground, but they're all over by the Roche Oh, pit. Silence is going to be hitting this. Did you see him? I don't actually know if they saw him on the Still a hard play to make, and right now, Radiant don't have vision of anybody from Hellraisers, but they will spot out the Quap here. Okay, Quap has buyback now, so they've weathered us. And now, I think HR have the edge when DC don't have buyback on the Enigma. They kill the Enigma, they could possibly win the game right now. Right, Dubu jumps out, able to find that Queen of Pain, a hell of a lot of damage out. She's silenced, BKB popped, able to jump away for Rev, drops the black hole, though it's able to catch! They caught the Queen of Pain yet again, she's gonna need to buyback here in Milan, also going to be eaten up. They both have buyback. Mason also on top of J4, he's trying to run away, he has the gem also off to the side, but Swift and Nain starting to deal the damage onto Rev, he's able to blink out. Uh, Mason still hits so freaking hard here, and they don't have the Lich or the Legion Commander for over 100 seconds. I don't know if they're going to be able to hold on after this one. It might be too much as Razor is starting to fall. The Black Hole was big, and DC making the plays, although they did take down Enigma. Kaiser was able to do that and then jumps out afterwards. Milan doesn't really have any way to get out of here, but they don't have Enigma. I don't know if that matters enough because it's only the Queen of Pain left alive for, for the base. 100 seconds. Go for the base, Kaiser. That's your play. All right, let's see if he can do it. Base race right now. Kaiser hitting the Tier 4 towers. He does a lot of damage to them. And right now, are there any TP boots? Actually, Timbersaw doesn't have any. Kaiser is maybe going to be able to do this. Can he kite them away long enough? No, he's forcing them back. But still, Mason is hitting the Tier 4 towers. And... Hello? I don't know if it's enough. Cast Warcry? He doesn't care about Warcry. Now, Mason, I, I, I... Oh, he doesn't have a TP on Kaiser. This is him against the base. Oh, they also saw that, too. I hope someone saw that. Yeah. Okay, well, this uh, God Strength on Mason looks like it's just going to do the trick, and he will be able to whack us through. This is pretty anticlimactic <laughs> to what was a pretty exciting game. Yeah. GG. GG, indeed. Man, so in the end, was it just the... the the lack or the buybacks that were forced when Queen of Pain had to fight around there? I think it was. Honestly, I think DC should have won this a lot earlier. Okay. I think 4F just completely botched a lot of fights. Um, and I think Clockwork played amazingly well, too. Uh, Clockwork kind of kept Hellraiser in this game for a very, very long time, but. Again, when you're up against Enigma, you have a clock. I think it's one of the few heroes that you're, you have a, like a really. Like, you just actually constantly feel pressure. It's like a time bomb just waiting to go off. And yeah, he didn't even, he didn't play that well. He, like, maybe black hole like, what, seven heroes in an hour-long game? Yeah. Uh, but the, the black holes that he did cast later on, uh, on in the game totally uh, mattered. But HR could not break high ground. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for us for day number two, DC 2-0 over Hellraisers. That is going to put them at a pretty nice advantage and the bottom three teams there in that group. We'll see if they're going to be able to continue and build this momentum into day number three of the group stages, which starts bright and early at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, yet again here on this channel. We'll see you guys then with more from TI7 group stages.